the Ottoman Emirate, Civil War and Recovery, in 1439, as the price of receiving military aid from Catholic Europe. The Byzantine Emperor, John VIII, had accepted the union of the Greek and Latin churches under the primacy of Rome. Pope, Eugenius IV had a strong motive for fulfilling his side of the contract, and organizing a crusade on the Emperor's behalf. His position as head of the church was not secure, but a successful crusade would make his position unassailable. Nor did he have difficulty in raising support for the project. Above all, he was able to enthuse King Vladislav whose kingdom was under attack from the Ottomans. Venice, too, was ready to participate, since a successful crusade could lead to the reoccupation of Thessaloniki and the acquisition of other territories. So, too, was the Duke of Burgundy. Credentials as a crusader could lead to his recognition as a king. The other willing participant against his Ottoman enemy was the Emir of Karaman. If the Emir could attack Murad in the east and draw him into Anatolia, the Venetian, Burgundian, Pontifical and Byzantine galleys could block the Bosphorus and the Dardanelles and prevent Murad from crossing the straits to meet the Hungarian army as it invaded his territories in Europe. The difficulty with this plan was coordination. In 1443, before the Allied fleet was ready, Ibrahim of Karaman attacked Murad's lands in Anatolia, with no opposition at the straits from the Byzantine Emperor, Murad crossed to Anatolia and forced Ibrahim into submission before returning to Adirne. Here he learned first of the death of his favorite son, Aladdin, and then, in late autumn, of an invasion. A. Hungarian army under John Hunyadi had entered and devastated Serbia and was advancing towards Sofia, destroying or forcing back the Ottoman forces in its path. The Hungarians had the advantage, not only in the size of their army, but also in the new battlefield tactic of creating mobile fortresses out of carts and field artillery, which the Ottoman cavalry were unable to approach. In the end, despite the desertion of his cavalry army, Murad and his janissaries stopped the Hungarian advance at the Zlatica Pass in the Balkan Mountains. In bitter winter weather, both armies retreated. It was probably the horrors of the Winter War that persuaded Murad and Vladislav to make peace. In the summer of 1444 in Adirne, the negotiators agreed on a 10-year truce between Murad and Vladislav, 22 in the session of Galyabats, Smedrovo and other fortresses to George Brankovic and Apos. In August an Ottoman envoy traveled to Hungary to ratify the terms. Then Murad made an extraordinary decision. Saddened, no doubt, by the death of Aladdin and the events of the Winter War, and with all his borders apparently secure, he abdicated in favor of his 12-year-old son, Prince Mehmed. This was an opportunity that the Pope did not let pass. To allow the crusade to continue, he absolved the King of Hungary from his oath. And, in the autumn of 1444, King Vladislav and John Hunyadi led the Hungarian army on a destructive march to Varna, on the Black Sea, coast of Bulgaria. In the crisis, the viziers recalled Murad from his retirement in Manisa. This time, however, the Allied fleets did block the straits. The Sultan, however, chose to cross at the Bosphorus and, as he set up cannon on the Asian shore, the Genoese of Para established a shore battery on the European side. Under the cover of these guns, and in boats which the Genoese had supplied, his army crossed the straits. On November 10, 1444, the armies met at Varna, with the Hungarian cannon again driving the Ottoman cavalry from the field. At a crucial point, however, the king broke loose from the ranks, allowing one of the janissaries around the sultan to unhorse and kill him. The death of the king decided the battle. The Ottoman victory, in turn, ensured that the largely orthodox Balkan peninsula came under the rule of the Muslim Ottomans rather than the Catholic Hungarians. From Varna, Murad returned to Manisa, but not to a peaceful retirement. During the crisis of 1443-4, Constantine, the Byzantine despot of Mistra, had seized Ottoman lands in southern Greece and was continuing his raids, while George Kostriot, or Skanderbeg, had recovered the old Kostriot domains in central Albania. However, it was a crisis in 1446 that brought the old sultan out of retirement. First, a fire devastated Adirne. Next, a Janissary rebellion, which Prince Mehmed could not control, terrorized the city, persuading the Grand Vizier, Halil Chandarli to recall Murad.23. On his reaccession, Murad turned against his rebellious vassals. In 1447, he invaded the Peloponnesos and reduced Constantine to submission. Next year he attacked Skanderbeg in Albania, but in mid-campaign received news that John Hunyadi had again invaded his lands with an army of Hungarians and blocks. Abandoning the Albanian campaign he marched northwards and, in October 1448, encountered Hunyadi on the plain of Kosovo. After a two-day battle, Hunyadi fled the field. 
the removal of the danger from Hungary left, Murad free, in the winter of 1448-9, to seize Arda, the last of the, Taco domains on mainland Greece and, in 1449, once again to, attack Skanderbeg, confining him to the fortress of Kruja. Against, this stronghold, however, his attacks were unsuccessful. This was Murad II's last campaign. He died early in 1451.